Over the years, I've gone from job to job to job as a bit of a drifter, and a lot of people ask me what it is I actually do. Currently, I work nights in a care home looking after residents who have varying degrees of dementia. Let me show you what a typical night shift is actually like. As soon as I walk out that door at 6.30pm, my mind shifts. As soon as I start my hour-long walk to work, I'm trying to prepare myself mentally for the night ahead. No shift is ever the same when you're working in care, whether that's during the day or the night. The walk itself is pretty scenic along the main road. On one side you've got the sand dunes, the other some beautiful housing dating back from the 1870s. By the time I've reached the square, it's about half seven. Now any normal person would either drive or take the bus to cover the two and a half mile walk from my house to work. Until recently I was doing just that. But I've recently become a little more health conscious and decided the walk to and from work every day might do me some good. So I get to work around 7.40 and from then it's waiting for the other night staff to arrive and then onto the handover where the events of the day are discussed to the moods of the residents through the day are passed over and any other important information is passed over to us before we start the shift at 8 o'clock. As soon as the shift begins, the day staff have left is onto the medication, probably the most painful task in any healthcare setting. When I first took this job, I did ask not to be trained on meds because I didn't want the responsibility. There are a lot of rules and regulations that go along with medication, including how you're supposed to dispense, distribute, record and waste. Making sure the meds match up with the paperwork is vital, and every little detail needs to be recorded for audits. Needless to say, however, I did a little getting trained on meds after two months into this job and seem to have found myself doing them on every shift. It takes just under an hour and a half and then it's double checking the paperwork, filling in anything that's been missed before getting the last few residents changed and into bed. Depending on what day it is depends on what I get up to next. Some days it'll be cleaning the lounges and dining rooms, sometimes it'll be scrubbing the bathrooms and some days I'll just be doing everything. It's arduous but it's got to be done. After all, this is the resident's home, not mine. I'm just employed to take care and clean up after them. After all that, it's one final check to make sure everyone's locked up securely and then it's down to the laundry for me. For the next couple of hours, I'm in the basement doing wash loads, sorting out clothes and ironing everything from pillowcases to duvet covers and jumpers. When you work in this, or even any environment, I'm a firm believer in setting myself standards when it comes to making sure everything I do is completed to a standard that I myself would be happy with if it was me on the other side of this. If, as a resident, I'd seen my clothes hadn't been ironed or the carpet had crumbs littered all over it, I'd be pretty unhappy. I was paying all that money to be looked after and the standard was abysmal. Depending on how much there is to do, you might not be finished till stupid o'clock in the morning. It could be midnight, it could be 2 or 3 a.m. You don't know until the job is done. Somewhere in the mix of all that, there's checks to be done and call bells to answer amongst other things. As I said before though, every shift is different and you have to be prepared to deal with anything that happens in an appropriate way. I do tend to get a little time to myself before the morning paperwork has to be started at 4.30 and then between 5.30 and 6, the residents start waking themselves up and the morning rush begins. Most care homes I've worked with in the past have a selection of residents who like to get up at the crack of dawn and be down in the lounge waiting for breakfast. Some have a selection of residents they want up and ready just to make it easier for the morning shift. Some will just tell you to leave them all in bed but make sure they're clean and comfortable. The early morning rush will depend entirely on where you work and the routine that works best for each resident. By the time 8am comes around, everything is done, and if it's not, well, that's just tough luck. I'm out the front door and starting my hour-long walk home. Again, you might think I'm crazy, I've just worked 12 hours and I'm going to spend the next hour walking on my feet when I could be getting the bus home. Let me explain though. I personally need that walk. If I've had a rough night or it's been mentally taxing, that walk with my headphones on and whatever audiobook I've got going allows me to spend that time just emptying my head. As soon as I'm out that door, work's done. It's over. I'm not taking it home with me. And I found that since taking that extra time to do the walk, the speed at which I fall asleep has improved dramatically. My sleep overall, I feel, has improved. I feel much calmer, more relaxed when I get home. And all I want to do is just go to bed with a sandwich and some background noise. And that's it. That's, that's basically the night shift for you. As I said at the start though, this is just a typical night. 
Every night is different and every care home is different. This is a much calmer home than some of the ones I've previously worked in. My advice to anyone who's looking for a job in care, really do your research on the home and have a good think about whether you think the job could be right for you. It's not an easy job, but it is a job and like anything, it's as good as you make it. Thanks for watching everyone. And as always, I'll see you next time.